Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell and I am the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. I have lots of videos about Hashimoto's and it's been a while since I have addressed the current state of the pandemic and the ways in which this may be affecting those of us with Hashimoto. So I wanted to address two questions that I get a lot from my subscribers here to my YouTube channel as well as some, some of my followers over on Instagram and from many of my beloved Hashimoto's clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one, both in Denver and around the U.S. and around the world, which is, the first question is, if I have Hashimoto's, am I considered to be immunocompromised? Great question. I'll get to that in just a second. And the second question is, if I have Hashimoto's, am I at a greater risk of contracting the coronavirus? So these are two great questions. And honestly, because I have Hashimoto's, I've been wondering these for myself as well. Now I was sick in the kind of late winter, early spring of 2020, and an antibody test last summer showed that I did have positive antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 novel virus that we know about uh, today. So I'm hoping, right, that this natural immunity is sticking with me. Uh, what we're looking into, of course, are the implications that maybe infection, natural infection with COVID may have on individuals who have autoimmune disease, in particular those who have Hashimoto's, and we're looking to see if those who have autoimmune disease and Hashimoto's maybe have greater risk factors. So it's kind of this whole can of worms. I'm doing daily research and a lot of reading, checking in with uh, many of my beloved colleagues and mentors and advisors and uh, doing lots of reading of in-depth research. But as we all know, because this current situation in the world is so brand new, Oftentimes, it just hasn't been long enough for long-term data. But today, I felt like I had the answer, at least for where I am today, to give you guys a little bit of insight. So the first question is, if I have Hashimoto's, am I considered to be immunocompromised? So basically, the short answer is no. <laughs> and this is good news, right? Because we don't really want to be in a category of immunocompromised individuals. This is a sort of a different thing. Now, if we have Hashimoto's, yeah, we have a wonky immune system and we have autoimmune disease, both of which aren't great. And we know that from living with the disease and its symptoms and corresponding other potential disease or symptom states that come along with it that, you know, it's a serious condition is a serious illness, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we are immunocompromised. So this is good. We're not immunocompromised. We're not immunodeficient. However, it is possible that people with more than one autoimmune condition, which is called polyautoimmunity, may be at a higher risk of this type of immuno deficiency immunocompromised situation. So in my case, I have two autoimmune diseases. I have Hashimoto's and I also have celiac disease. And God willing, just those two. I work with many clients in my practice who have one or more autoimmune diseases. And we know that there are risk factors associated with where there is one, there will be more. Of course, genetics, lifestyle, food deficiencies, pathogen and viral exposure, all of these things may increase our likelihood of developing poly autoimmunity. So immunodeficiency, the definition in a nutshell, basically is the immune system doesn't respond adequately to getting an infection. So autoimmunity is when the immune system is overactive and over responding and targeting and attacking healthy self tissue when it doesn't need to be, okay? So immunocompromised, not responding with a normal reaction to an infection 
is not the same thing as autoimmunity where the immune system is mistakenly attacking self tissue. Just want to be kind of clear on those two points. So if you have Hashimoto's and you are at risk of developing another autoimmune condition, for example, myasthenia gravis or lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's, these autoimmune conditions do cause immunodeficiency. So in and of itself, Hashimoto's disease is not an immunocompromised condition, but the more autoimmune conditions that you have and the more serious poly autoimmunity you have with these other types of conditions, yes, may contribute to immunodeficiency. The number one way to know if you are immunocompromised or immunodeficient is whether or not you are taking maybe a particular uh, type of a medical medication treatment or drug that is um, trying to reduce the autoimmune reaction in your body, thereby causing um, this immunodeficiency. And there are a class of immunosuppressant drugs that fall into uh, this particular category. So let's talk about just what a few of them are and what types of conditions may be treated in case you fall into that category of poly autoimmunity. So if you have psoriasis or lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's, multiple sclerosis, alopecia, a person who has one of these conditions may be treated with a type of immunosuppressant drug such as a corticosteroid or a kinase inhibitor or other types of inhibitors that are targeted to suppressing the immune system to stop the autoimmunity from taking place. And there is another uh, category of drugs called biologics, okay? So it's actually a pretty complicated um, set of medical treatment for these types of conditions. Side effects vary from taking these types of medications, but immunosuppressed is typically uh, one of the associated risks with taking these drugs, okay? It means that your immune system is weakened. It means your body is less resistant to handling infection, and it is an increased risk of certain types of infections. For example, in a patient who has rheumatoid arthritis and is taking an immunosuppressive drug, they may be at an increased risk of tuberculosis. Okay, so there's a lot of evidence behind this and the drug companies themselves typically, you know, you'll maybe hear on a, say on a pharmaceutical company's commercial talk about some of these um, types of conditions for which you need to be careful if you're taking one of these drugs. And immunosuppressant drugs give relief for the drug that they are prescribed, but in many cases may promote reemergences of other types of illness. So this is up to you and your prescribing physician to make sure um, that if you are, you know, you have one of these conditions or if you are taking one of these drugs, that you understand uh, the inherent risk factors and side effects of taking these medication. So I just digressed a ton, but I hope I've answered the question for many of you who are out there asking, if I have Hashimoto's, am I immunocompromised? The answer is basically no. Unless you have poly autoimmunity, you have one of these other conditions which I've just described, and you're taking an immunosuppressive drug that I just described, in which case, yes, but that's a different set of circumstances, not just related to Hashimoto's, okay? My next question that I get a lot from people is, am I more likely to have increased risk for SARS-CoV-2 infection because I have Hashimoto's? Or you could just say hypothyroidism, but we know that about 90%-ish of hypothyroid cases are Hashimoto's, meaning that they have the autoimmunity origin. I have another video about that. You can watch that one as well. So um, earlier this year, in fact, it was April of 2021, some information came out based on a large population-based control and cohort study that found that patients with hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, like in Graves, are not in fact at an increased risk for contracting SARS-CoV-2. 
So um, initially, it was potentially, you know, in the early stages of the pandemic, thought that perhaps individuals had an increased risk of developing a severe course of COVID-19 because one of the sort of defining factors is that SARS-CoV-2 uses angiotensin converting enzyme 2, which is also known as the ACE2, as an entry point for host cell infection. So basically the spike protein that is part of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, viral uh, infection uses the ACE2 receptor site in order to access entry into the cell. And serum ACE levels are associated with thyroid function in all people. So that's one of the things um, that ACE does uh, as far as its job and its role in the body is to help with thyroid function. And so that was one of the reasons why, in fact, researchers thought maybe if you have a thyroid condition that you have sort of this dysregulated uh, ACE2. Um, also, we know from um, some other research, and I have a video about this plus personal experience, that individuals um, who have thyroid conditions have a higher incidence of cardiovascular conditions, like myself. So what we found, and again, I'm kind of going back to these studies so I can pinpoint a couple of things, thyroid patients being seen as having higher incidence of cardiovascular conditions and because of the ACE uh, entry point, um, which helps to control uh, thyroid function. It was maybe thought that, you know, this uh, type of an infection would be more likely to target these individuals. Well, the population-based control and cohort study was actually conducted um, by Thomas Bricks, MD, PhD, and his colleagues at Odense University Hospital in Denmark to evaluate the risk and document possible prognosis of an infection in patients who meet those criteria. And um, basically, uh, they found that essentially in their review, of this population-based data, the risk of contracting SARS-CoV-2 did not differ between patients of hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism as compared to the control group who were non-thyroid patients, nor did the risk of developing adverse outcomes disproportionately affect patients with either condition. So um, I'm just going to read that again because I feel like that's kind of the clinching point, the summary point of the research. In a review of population-based data, the risk of contracting SARS-CoV-2 did not differ between patients with hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism as compared to the control group of patients who did not have any thyroid conditions, nor did the risk of developing adverse outcomes disproportionately affect patients with either condition. So the study authors basically concluded in their findings, these results suggest that receiving treatment for thyroid dysfunction should not affect the clinical management of a patient's risk of acquiring SARS-CoV-2 infection or the management of patients who already contracted the infection. Crude analysis shows an excess risk of adverse outcomes, but it says these associations attenuate after adjustment for other comorbidity and temporal changes. So basically saying if all things being equal, there were other comorbidities, there were other um, risks of other maybe lifestyle deficiencies, um, age-related outcomes, but that the thyroid condition made the kind of playing field relatively equal. So I find this to be somewhat encouraging um, you know, here on this channel, I promote a lot for supporting naturally our body's immune system, um, supporting the endocrine system naturally, supporting the thyroid naturally. This is a multi-pronged approach. Um, as a board certified holistic nutrition therapist, I believe that what we eat, supplements that we take, the way that we treat our bodies, self-care, exercise, sleep, um, our stress management, um, so many various factors really play into the overall optimum wellness and vitality of our immune system. And so my personal belief, both as a Hashimoto's patient uh, who's in remission, thank you, um, and also as a practitioner and expert who works with dozens and dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds of uh, Hashimoto's clients each year, I fully believe that um, we have a lot within our control. We have a lot within our own powers and resources and toolboxes to really be able to strengthen and support our bodies through those, those various measures. So um, I'm just answering those questions today. 
Am I immunocompromised and am I at a greater risk? And the answer is no and no. I hope this has been helpful. I have so many other videos here. If you're new, please subscribe. Each week I release a new video. You can set your notifications bell so that every time I do release a new video, you'll get an alert for that. And if you're new to having Hashimoto's, well, it's time for you to start learning a little bit more about your condition. Questions like the ones answered in this video can also be answered in my online 30-day self-paced, very affordable crash course into Hashimoto's. Everything you need to know about living healthfully and holistically with Hashimoto's. That program is called Nourished and Renewed with Hashimoto's. And you can find out more information in the description down below this video. But if you've been around for a while, you've had Hashimoto's for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and you're stuck, or you're going through a new change in your life, maybe you just had a baby, maybe you're going through perimenopause, whatever the case might be. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one guidance and support, you're looking for a fully customized, individualized, in-depth program, you can also work with me. There is a schedule, a free phone consultation button right on my YouTube page, up in the banner, up at the top, and there's also a link to that down below in the description behind this video. So hope is not lost. You found a great channel. I'm so glad you're here. Share this with your friends who have thyroid issues. Share it with your doctor. Let them know that you're getting some holistic nutrition advice about your thyroid and your overall health on my website here on the YouTube channel and also at sarahpeternell.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back next week with another video. Bye.